There are lots of things that get in the way of you building good software well. But two things that to me stand out as extremely common pitfalls are taking responsibility for quality away from development teams, relying on usually manual testing by some other group of people, and my topic for today, over-specifying requirements in a way that builds huge barriers to achieving good software development. Or to put it simply, your stories are too big. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the video today, hit like as well. I was asked a question recently and it prompted me to record this episode because this is a very common question and I hope that the questioner will forgive me for saying so, but it's also the wrong question really, or at least it is approaching the problem from the wrong end. User stories are interesting, extremely useful things, but also seem to cause all sorts of problems for people. They seem to be a pretty slippery kind of idea, but I think that actually they're quite a lot simpler than they seem, or at least they should be. And part of the trick is to work to keep them as simple as we can. One of the several slippery aspects of stories is how do we build big complex software in small simple steps? Let's look at the question again. The core of it is this. There is a repeated discussion we've had while slicing stories that are crud-like, but are complex due to historical reasons. We have tried doing vertical slices by combining front-end and back-end in the same story, but this came at the cost of splitting create and read stories. Well, this is talking about a real problem. Let me first comment a little bit on the way that the questioner posed his question. I think it shows another common problem with user stories. Even if he and his team aren't falling into this trap, it's common enough to be worth talking about. We're talking here about user stories and all of the language is technical. This may be a shorthand to communicate the problem more clearly to me, which is fair enough because it worked and I understood the problem. But if the stories were framed this way, create, read, update and delete stories, then they would be pointing to another very common problem. Uh, the stories may already be too big and complicated, particularly if, as the question has said, the software is comp complex for historical reasons. But also, um, one of the traps in defining stories is something that I've spoken about before. The difference between stories being of value to the user rather than of being valuable to the user. The subtle difference between value and valuable is, to me, the source of one of the commonest mistakes in defining user stories. And is also a principle that, if we use it properly, it can allow us to break stories into smaller pieces. Let me pause here and thank our sponsors. We're fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic. All of these companies offer products and services that are well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel all of the time. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, please do click on their links in the description below. Support them and thank them for supporting our channel. And also you might find something interesting. So what is this value versus valuable thing all about then? I think that many teams and organizations may be most Think of user stories as needing to capture all that a user wants from a particular feature. That is, it's valuable to them in some way. I think that this is a big misunderstanding of user stories and results in software development being complicated, testing to be more difficult to do well, and ultimately the user getting less of what they want, really want or need, not more. The confusion here is pretty deep. It's about what is a story for, really. This misunderstanding is caused by thinking of a user story as a kind of statement of the work that needs to be done. And that isn't the goal at all. This isn't primarily a project management tool. This is primarily a tool to assist in the creation of good software. It's an opportunity for us to be clear about what we're aiming to achieve. 
separate from how we will achieve it. User stories fall into two common traps. On the one hand, they're used as a list of technical tasks of some kind, programming by remote control, directing the software development, sometimes in very great detail on how to solve the problem. This is a misguided use of user stories. They should define the desirable outcome, not the solution. The what, not the how. And the other common failure is to treat them as big complex functional requirements that define everything that the user could ever possibly desire. So our goal is to define stories that state very clearly and simply one small thing that the user may want from the system, not everything that they may desire. The teams who are best at software development write more simpler stories rather than fewer, more complex stories. One user need, one story. The ideal story should be completable in a day or two. And any story that takes more than a week to complete is probably too big. Oh, <laughs> and any story that takes more than two weeks to complete isn't really a user story, it's something else entirely. These small stories are easier to describe, easier to build, easier to test, easier to track, easier to change when we learn how to do things better. So, back to our questioner. If for historical reasons the software is complex, then create may be complex too. Before we even get to the coupling between create and read and create and update and delete, let's imagine we are writing a bookstore. We'd probably like to be able to create, read, update and delete instances of books too. But the key insight here is to think from the user's perspective, but incrementally. Instead of imagining the fully formed perfect bookstore springing into existence from our minds, we need to face the practical reality that building that fully formed online bookstore will take time. And also that until we try out some of our ideas, we don't really know what fully formed even means yet. So what is some small value that we can imagine bringing to a user that will help us on our way? What's the user's story? It isn't create book. It's not even as an admin user, I want to be able to create a book. That is looking at this from the perspective of the team building the system rather than from the perspective of the user. And the point of this is to look at it from the perspective of the user. All of this is certainly a little bit subjective. And certainly in trying to explain this with simple examples, it can be a little bit tricky to generalize. But I think I'd prefer to start without having saying anything about creating books at all. In this case, the primary user of the bookstore doesn't care much about book creation. So maybe the first step is to think of them. What is it that they do care about? What is the small piece of value, that not yet valuable thing perhaps, but something small and simple enough to count as being in the user's interest? I can think of a few, but maybe search for a specific book by name or perhaps list all available books would be a good place to start. They can't buy the book yet, they can't read a review, they can't do lots of things, but perhaps they could look to see what was there or search for a book and see how much it cost. That's value, if not valuable. What would it take to implement a feature like that? Well, clearly we must have at least one book to find or list. But do we really need to have all of the facilities to create it? And what is a book anyway? For either of these features, all we need from a book so far is a name and maybe, if we're doing the advanced version, a price as well. So how could we create a book like that? Well, the simple answer is that we could cheat. We could hard code it somewhere. We don't even need a database to implement this feature. Of course, naturally, this isn't a very valuable feature, nor is our implementation even close to what we'd expect to end up with sometime later. But once we have it, this is already of value, even though not yet valuable. So this story was easy to write. It, it would be easy to test because we know what the books are because we hard coded them. Uh, it's atomic. We don't have to build any of the create, update or delete functionality to create this story. And we don't even need to know yet what we want of a book. The book we need for this 
is a correct, accurate representation of a book as far as we understand this one simple feature. Later, we can incrementally grow our model of a book and maybe even our implementation of how it's stored. Maybe later we'll see some stories that require us to add an international standard book number or the weight of the book or the cover art or show some sample text or maybe some reviews. But all of those are stories for another day. Today we're writing, I don't know, list of books. So all we need is a name that we can show on the list, not valuable, but value. We could show this feature to people and ask their opinion. We could even release it as part of the advertising, perhaps for our new bookshop startup. These are the kinds of books that we will be selling and this is what our site will look like. All of this is value without necessarily being valuable yet. What did we gain from this rather naive implementation? Well, if we were in startup mode, this may be the first or one of the first stories that we, that we begin with. And at this stage, we'd need to decide how to present our list of books in the all, albeit very simple first version of our user interface. I'd use a story like this to try out how I want to separate the back end from the front end of my system, perhaps, how they will communicate, and what this first simplest version of the API may, may begin to look like. And also how I will deploy all of these things, how I will test them, what my first version of a deployment pipe pipeline will be like for, for this very, very simple system when it's at the easiest possible state. I think that there are several reasons for the misguided preference for bigger, more complex stories. They allow people writing the stories to be lazier and less thoughtful is one. More detached from the real process of software development. This comes at the cost of poorer visibility and less control overall in the dev process and is so long term a much poorer choice, but it feels easier at the start. Big stories also seem to me to be based on a really huge mistake and that is assuming that our job is to get things right first time. Surely we'll be more efficient if we say precisely what it is that the user wants and build that in one step. Well, maybe you would, but I doubt it, and even if you do live in that magical world that de demands omniscience from everyone, you'd have to have a perfect guess about what the user wanted forevermore. And then they're in the real world, there's no chance of that. This isn't ever what real software development is really is like. Big stories are betting on your guess of what you understand being correct. Working in smaller steps not only allows us to change our minds as we learn more, it assumes that we will. And so it makes it a lot easier for us to change our minds when we need to. Because our tests are asserting small individual pieces of value to the user rather than the technicalities and implementation detail of how our software works. Getting good at breaking stories into small steps like this is a skill that we need to work on. Sometimes it takes a bit more thought than simply listing everything that we imagine a user will need for our features to be valuable. Much better to steer our software and our business towards valuable and so success in these smaller increments that are each a little, have a little bit of value associated with them rather than to assume that we can achieve success in a prescient single band. My friend Goiko Adzik and his writing partner David Evans have created what is in my opinion the best guide to help you to develop this skill. I keep a copy of this book on my iPad so that if I find myself stuck I can refer to it to jog my memory of all of the different ways that they recommend that you can use to break big complex features into smaller, simpler stories. I also have a very highly reviewed training course that goes into all of this uh, and the associated testing approach in a lot more detail. There's a link to both of those in the description below. Um, I get nothing if you buy the Goiko's book except perhaps a beer from Goiko next time I see him. But I recommend it very strongly to you anyway. It's an excellent book. Starting off by assuming that whatever we do, stories, architecture code, our understanding of what a user is, even what a book is, is probably wrong, is always the stronger, more stable approach. Because as we learn more, all of these things will evolve and change and we'll be wrong. 
Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. You can sign up for a free trial and get a 15% discount if you join for an annual subscription, whatever level of support you offer to, you, you choose to, 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 to give us. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thanks once again to all of our Patreon members for your support. It helps us to keep the channel going. Thank you very much and bye-bye.